Okay, we'll start. Yeah, let's uh, let's pray and then start. Okay. Even as we come before the Lord, we're reminded of His grace. We are reminded of His mercy, and um, we're constantly reminded of His faithfulness. So let's just thank the Lord, um, and from our own hearts, um, check check. Um, sorry, somebody said they can't hear me. Just a minute. Um, check. Is it clear? Check. Can you hear me? Check. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Right. Okay. Let's. Um, yeah. Let's. Um, let's just pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you this morning. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, Lord. We thank you for your words declares that uh, your mercies are new every morning your faithfulness lord it reaches to the clouds reaches to the skies lord it's like majestic mountains so oh, father god we thank you it's so tangible and visible that you put it on display for us master we thank you god lord we thank you for yet another opportunity to draw near to your presence we thank you for yet another opportunity to look into your word god Lord, I just pray for a freshness to come upon us, for a freshness to descend upon us, Father God. And Lord, even now, Holy Spirit, we pray that we'll be able to worship you by your spirit and Lord, in spirit and in truth, Father God, even as you lead us, Lord. Yes, Lord, open our eyes to see you, open our eyes to hear you, Father God. Master, we, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands, Father God. We place ourselves, Lord, Lord, into your mighty hands, O God, to live for you, Father God. Lord, we pray that uh, our lives will be spent, O God, uh, Lord, seeking you, pursuing you, Father, pursuing your will and purpose, Lord, in our lives, O oh Master. Father, we thank you, Lord, even as we, Lord, commit Lord, today's sessions into your mighty hands, we pray that you would, Lord, lead us, draw us, Lord, to your presence, Father God, and teach us, Father God, as only you can, Lord. We thank you. Write your word upon our hearts. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, I hope it's audible to everyone. Yeah, OK. OK. So last class, we, we looked at one um, portion from Luke chapter 7, right? Or Luke chapter 6, 7, yeah. Luke chapter 7, and that's where we stopped. So we've been um, learning about becoming a worshiper, right? And we see uh, an example of you know, extravagant worship, right? Radical worship, extravagant worship, unhindered worship. We see that in Luke chapter seven. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's look at what we what we read through Luke chapter seven, thirty six onwards. We saw. 36 to the end of the chapter, right? So from this, we learn many things right, which we can actually put to practice. We see in this chapter, this chapter is about worship. This chapter is about surrender. What, what we read there is that it is a worship which, is, which does not have a song. It's a worship which does not have any music instruments. And it's a worship that is pure, it's a worship that is unhindered, wholehearted, and it's a worship which is the posture of the heart. Right? So that is something that we learn from this chapter, right? Uh, this portion. So uh, Luke chapter 7, verse 36. So I just want us to go through it, right? read through it one more time. I know we read it at the end of uh, last week's class, but read through it, and, um, and then you know, share, you know, what is it that you learn from this chapter, right? About worship, what is it that you, you personally, that you learned from this? Okay, so let's just take about five minutes to go through. So each one, open your own Bibles and go to Luke chapter 7 and look at verses 36 to the end of the chapter, verse 50, right? So from that interaction, the conversation with the Lord Jesus has with Simon the Pharisee and the whole thing that happens. What do you learn? You know, what are some things that you learn? You make a note of it. Maybe you can write down so that you know it'll be easy to share, right? Okay. 
Uh, online students, same thing. Um, can take about five minutes. Hello, please. My, uh, Luke chapter 7, verse what, sir? Luke chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. It's there in your notes as well. Okay, thank you, sir. Sorry, you've read it. Okay, just just read through it. I'll ask.
Okay, done. Okay. Right. So, so where does this whole incident happen? So there is one incident that is happening there. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just ask someone and then that person can answer. Okay. So, yeah. So where does this incident take place? Simon Ferris's house. So, so what exactly happens, brother, behind you? Dark shirt. Yeah. Just behind. What happens? Can you just narrate what happens there? Uh, just pass the mic to him. Um, um, I think somebody is. Uh, mic is unmuted. <laughs> uh, somebody's mic is unmuted. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Just give him the mic, please. Okay, just, just say, yeah. Okay, everybody listen. Um, just listen to what he's saying, yeah. Yeah, just give him the mic, yeah. Okay. Uh, so she forgiven her sins to to repent herself and uh, she cried and uh, washed Jesus' feet with her tears and uh, weeped Jesus' feet with her hair and kissed Jesus' feet. Mm. So, uh, so this woman, so what did the, okay, thank you, yeah. So maybe you can give it to that person behind, um, yeah, you can send it. So what did the people, when they saw this, uh, what was going on in there? What did they, how did they react? Uh, like they, they told like, uh, who is this man? Like, does that does that does they does not know that he's a sinner? Like, she, uh, how can he judge him? Sorry, what? How sorry, how can he forgive him? Like, she's a big sinner. Okay. Sinner? You can actually look at that passage. What exactly did they? Um... Oh, no, no, they, they won't talk. Yeah, the, the Pharisees told that if this man was a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this yeah. is who is such, who is touching him for he's a she's a sinner. Yeah. So this, so in their hearts, they thought that you know this person is a great sinner, and she is actually coming and doing all this in front of the master. And if this master knew that what kind of a person she was, what kind of a character she was. He would not allow her to do it, right? So that is what they said. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just get it behind. Yeah. So, 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 what did Jesus, in response to this, what did Jesus share? Uh, yeah. So uh, Jesus spoke to that uh, Pharisees that uh, a person who gave the money to the two people and one one of one of person takes for 100 and one person take 50 but they can't able to pay back so that person so, so what is that what is that story what is it called so the who have uh, yeah. what is that story the, called for giving i mean uh, getting um, how to tell it uh, who has getting more uh, Forgiving, you know, in the in the Bible, in that passage. What is that story normally called? You know, these kinds of stories. I'm asking him this one. Okay. It's called a parable. Yeah, parable, parable. Yeah? Okay. Okay, okay, so, okay. So, so he shares a parable hmm? yeah. in response to this. He teaches a parable. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can probably pass the mic to. Yeah. Yeah. So, what parable was this? A sinful woman forgiven, and uh, no, no, no. What parable was Jesus teaching in like, response to this? It was a parable. Yeah. So it's basically about forgiveness, and who has given more forgives more. Sorry, uh, yeah. can you just like, repeat that? Uh, 
for she loved much, but who is forgiven little and loves little. So, like, so what, what was the Lord teaching through that parable? In your own words, what was the Lord <coughs> teaching through that parable? To have a forgiving heart. To mm. Who should have a forgiving heart? Just go through it. Just go through it. I'll just check the online response. Okay. Illustrating forgiveness parable of two debtors, forgiveness and love. Okay. Hello, sir. Yeah. It, it was the parable, the meaning of the parable in this chapter. It was trying to let them know that they don't have right to judge the woman. Just, just give me one second. We'll just increase the volume here. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. We'll just we'll yes, sir. So it, it was it, it was trying to the, the parable, it was trying to um, let them yeah. know that they don't have just any right. Bring it down. They don't so, have uh, I think um Elkana just bring it down, yeah. Reduce it. It's too much. Um you might have to increase your volume, please. Um your okay. Can you be louder, the, please? Okay, is it okay like this? Um, no. Is it okay like this? Yeah, Sp say something, please. Okay. The the parable, the meaning of parable is, uh, it, the it was Jesus Christ was telling them right over there that they don't have any right to judge the woman because to them they were looking at the woman as a sinner. Um, was that the focus of the parable? Okay, I, I see uh, some more responses here. Mm. Yeah, Philip. Um, okay, anyone else here? Um, where's the mic? Probably, yeah. So, here. Jesus is telling about uh, uh, equality and uh, forgiveness and love mm -hmm. because he given uh, money that uh, he was telling the parable about one person he given money so he given money to uh, two people to one people he given uh, 500 and the, to another per person he given 50 hundred so it's like 50 mm -hmm. yeah so the moral the 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 moral is jesus is telling about equality and forgiveness and love that he loves everyone mm -hmm. equ equally and okay well, just yeah. read read that parable again okay just read through the parable again see the details of the parable okay so let me just go through the details. Okay, there is a creditor, okay, someone who is loaning money. So he gives two people um, who had actually who had borrowed from him. So one person had borrowed 500 dinari, the other person had borrowed 50 dinari. When they, they had nothing to give, right? That's what he says. They had nothing to repay the person from whom they borrowed. So what does that person do? He forgives both of them. Right? He forgives both of them. One who had a debt of 500 forgives. One who had a debt of 50 forgives. And so the Lord asks the question to Simon, tell me therefore, which of them will love him more? Right? Which of them will love him more? And what was the answer? Right? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one who was forgiven more because he realizes, hey, I had to give back 500 and my debt is cancelled. And so he says that, you know, the one who is forgiven more, he's going to love more. And therefore, he said, you have rightly judged. Yes, you have answered rightly. So in doing this, what was the Lord conveying? Yes, it was about love. It was about forgiveness. But was, what was the Lord? Yeah, go ahead. What was the Lord conveying 
to everyone who was there. Uh, what I when I read it, so what I feel is that in verse uh, forty-four. Yeah. Then he turned towards the woman and said to Simon. Um, no, no, no. From the you... from the parable. Yeah, from, from from the parable. Yeah, he's. The, it's he's about. Uh, it's about like from the parable. It's uh, that we may have like we may have bigger sense and some other people have smaller sense. Not yeah. that much sense. But uh, when we ha do sin, and when we come to forgiveness, ask for forgiveness, Lord, we don't have anything. We sometimes we stay in guilty, and we don't speak. But God listens to our silent thoughts also, and He forgives us. Like at that moment also, this is what I. Mm. Hey, see, the I think the text is yeah okay, Sharmista. Sh uh, actually. Who has sinned more will understand the meaning of forgiveness, and uh, he will, uh, or he or she, uh, since uh, 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 he or she after sinning comes through repentance, he uh, he or she will understand what is the real meaning of forgiveness and the peace of mind, and uh, that is why here, since this uh, woman has sinned more. He was seeking for the peace of mind, and so he was, she was. Uh, when uh, she heard that mm. Jesus has come to uh, Simon's house, so uh, she was very eager to meet him because uh, because she wanted uh, the peace of mind, and she eagerly wanted to be forgiven, and uh, she repented because uh, the more uh, usually we find that when uh, the sins are more. They come, uh, 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 they are, uh, uh, and when they repent, then uh, they uh, 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 they are more. Uh, yeah, I got they it. Love got Jesus it. more. They come yeah. to Him with a greater uh, dedication and uh, love. Right. So, in simple simple words, it means the Lord is talking about the response of someone. Who has been forgiven, right? Because people are asking, you know, if if the Lord only knew this person was a sinful woman, you know, uh, the whole city knew about her. Everyone knew what kind of character, what kind of reputation, you know, she had. Everybody knew. So the Lord is explaining that hey, this is a response of someone whose sin was great, but also who experienced forgiveness for all that she has done. So. He's talking about the response, the response being love, the response being worship. He's talking about the response. He's saying this person's response is more, responding in love is more because she was forgiven more. So that was the whole intent of the parable, right? Yes, you know, it's about love, it's about forgiven, but forgiveness. But he's talking about why, you know, her forgiveness, why is she responding like this? Why is she loving like this? Because she. Her sin was great, but she was forgiven, right? And then what, what does he go on to say? He goes on to talk to Simon about his response, right? Uh, what he did when he when the Lord came into the house. And, um, and what normally would happen in a Jewish household, you know, water to wash the feet and all that. Simon had, I don't know, Simon had overlooked all that, right? But here... Is someone who, despite all public opinion being against her, despite you know everything, she was you know maybe looked down upon. Despite all that, she went and did what she did. Okay. So what did she actually uh, do? Um, she washed the feet, etc., and also anointed him, uh, anointed them, anointed his feet with fragrant oil. Okay. Now, this particular uh, portion is also in Matthew's Gospel. It's also in Mark's Gospel. And we see that the value of that oil that she brought and poured out at his feet is mentioned there. Right? What is the value of it? It is equivalent to a year's salary. Right? A year's worth of uh, working and earning a person would earn in a year's time. So it's a fairly long time. Right? It's like a 
somebody had earned put you know year month after month after month work and got that salary it's that wages a uh, worth of oil that she brought in that she broke and uh, at the feet of the lord jesus you know uh, in in other gospel i think it's in mark where uh, we see that one of the disciples asking you know it would have been better if she had sold it or if he had given it to us we had sold it and we had given it to the poor it's such a waste that was you know one of the responses it's such a waste of money why should this be wasted and the lord's response is that you know she had done done this and her story wherever the gospel is shared this story will be narrated right so you know 2000 years after you know we are still talking about it because this is you know etched in in scripture that this is of such a great value so for her for the woman her sin was great obviously but her forgiveness also she experienced the depth of forgiveness and this was a response to having experienced right so what did the lord say after that um she turn, he turns to her verse 48 right he turns to her and he says to her your sins are forgiven and those who sat at the table said to themselves uh, began to say who's this who forgives sins then he said to the woman your faith has saved you go in peace now i just want us to imagine you know in that society women did not have the liberty and freedom that today you know uh, we experience or women of our times experience they did not have the liberty they did not have the freedom it was a very patriarchal society okay so that is one thing secondly what was really against her is her lifestyle her character and lifestyle which everyone seems to know seem to know it was it was a common topic you know, you know about this woman you know what what she did what she who she lives with what she does etc so it is a common conversation and topic and she comes in knowing that everybody is going to be looking at her like that everybody is going to looking at everybody is going to be thinking you know, what is this woman doing here you know why is she here and she comes in despite that and she comes prepared right so it it is not like some oil was there close by simon's house table she takes it and then she breaks it no this is something that she has thought thought through right maybe she she would have she wouldn't have slept the previous night she's thinking okay can i can i do this everybody is going to be looking at me everybody is going to be saying things at me pointing fingers at me can i really do it right and what can i offer him what really can i offer him to really show that i you know i i really love i really adore i really worship what can i show maybe i can say thank you you know your teaching your ministry has really impacted me maybe i can say something like that maybe i can maybe i can cook something for him and take him and you know take it and give it to him she must have said okay what is it that i have what is it that i can do in order to show my appreciation and love and his worth what is it that i can do right and she must have had this maybe she must have used it you know and you know some people say that she was of a you know the character was immoral so maybe she was even um, using it for her clients you know she would put it on herself and whatever be the you know popular whatever thought or opinion but she said this is something that is of value this is something that is of value it is worth quite a bit but in one instant she brought broke it and she said okay this is the lord is worthy of this she didn't think of it as a waste she didn't think of it as you know something that uh, you know oh did i do the right thing you no know, in her mind she was she did she she worshiped the lord with it and the lord said that this will be spoken of wherever the gospel is preached he's foretelling you know prophesying and saying this will be spoken of wherever the gospel is preached so we say here we see here sorry a picture of amazing worship yeah she valued the forgiveness and thankful uh, living higher than the expensive perfume yes thank you johnson yeah so so then we get an idea 
of what worship truly is. Right? So we get an idea. Yeah, go ahead. Um, obviously. Yes. Uh, Pastor, yes. Like, um, this is quite out of topic, okay. but um, I'm just trying to, uh, like, I'm trying two verses here. Yeah. Uh, like, in, like, before God, Jesus says that uh, in verse 48, uh, your sins are forgiven. Yeah. Uh, before that, the Pharisees and his uh, whoever was there, they say, if this was a prophet, he would have known. He would have known. So, which kind of woman this is? Yeah. And here he says, uh, your sins are forgiven. And they say, say, like, who is this? He even forgives sin. And in the earlier chapters or after this, we see that only God can forgive sins. Right. So here Jesus is, uh, is he trying to tell them, I'm not just a prophet, I'm God. Hmm. So that he is deity. Yeah, he is the so, deity. So this kind of uh, thing happens uh, in another place also, right? At the pool of Siloam, uh, pool of Bethesda, right? where um, that, that man is and then... So he, he he tells him, you know, go and sin no more. Arise, take up your bed and walk. Was it there or uh, when the when the friends, yeah, when the friends uh, dropped down um, from the roof and they lowered the person who was crippled, paralyzed? There also, there, there he says, you know, your sins are forgiven. So um, so we he, we see that in a in a couple of occasions where the Lord is uh, displaying his deity, the fact that he has power over sin. And um, some things that we can understand is also the fact that uh, the, the cause of sin, the outworking of sin, that it's not just breakdown of relationship with God, but also the kind of physical impact, uh, apart from the spiritual impact, the physical impact you know, sin causes in a person's body and all that. But yes, um, in saying that, you know, uh, he, that he's forgiving the sin, uh, he is displaying that that he and the Father are one. You know, he's, he's the, that he has authority over sin, that he can do that. Right? Yeah. If so. uh, about the deity of Christ, yes. We can show several places, um, like from the Gospels, this one, and where Father say, I mean, where the Lord says, before Abraham was, I, I am. And, um, and also, if it's in the Old Testament, we can show from Genesis uh, and then let us make man. And then, and in the epistles, we can show from Colossians 1, where it talks about um, uh, Colossians chapter 1. I think it's verse 15, um, where it talks about uh, everything that was made that was made uh, was made through Christ. Um, let me just uh, give you that verse. Yeah, Colossians 1, uh, verse 16. 17, 18, so 15 also. He is the image of the invisible God and the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, which talks about the pre-existence um, of Christ. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, good observation. So... So in, in looking at this, we just consider you know, when we actually consider some of the details of what could have happened um, going on in that woman's life, and then how she brought and how she did this intentionally. So she planned. So we understand the depth of what worship is. We understand the depth of what adoration is. You know, we understand the depth of this expression of love um, that one can have towards the Lord, okay? So, you know, we can only imagine, okay, probably she came to know about the Lord, probably she saw some people, so lives being transformed, changed, and uh, her life also being impacted, right? Where she felt that, hey, I see the, I see the unworthiness. You know, that's what happened, right? Even when we, uh, when we read about Zacchaeus, the Lord says, Zacchaeus, come down, 
and he goes and has a fellowship with him in this house and that's all we see the conversation teaching the experiences you know love and warmth and all that and zacchaeus says today lord i'm going to repay the lord has not pointed out the lord has not said anything but his mere mere presence and you know his teaching and everything there's been a change of heart in zacchaeus zacchaeus is like i'm going to give back twice what i took there's no you know there's no question of uh, you know his sins being pointed out or exposed nothing there's been a great transformation in his heart so probably for this woman also the minute she experiences the purity the holiness the presence of the lord she said you know what am i doing my life needs to change right and she comes to the presence of the lord in you know in total humiliation if you look at it it's like um um some of the some of the details that we see there um luke 7 right luke 7 she's crying brokenness right repenting uh kissing his feet right that's that is like lowering yourself to the lowest right so it is like uh, it's not the you know it's it, this is not something that you would do it's not a casual handshake this is like you're lowering yourself you're just humbling yourself completely right it's not it's even more than just prostrating right it's it's completely humbling yourself so that is what she did as an act of worship now hmm i don't know we can <laughs> i guess we can yeah behind us and just when standing you know just right there you know at the feet but it must have been a very you know it must have been quite a sight right so quite a sight that this was done the whole and and you know you know when you wear a perfume when you just spray perfume and come into a room if it's a good perfume you know it's just the waft of that perfume you know everybody gets to oh that's something nice smelling and you can imagine a whole bottle of that being broken so you know this this perfume is just drenching the complete atmosphere everybody's like what is that what is that oh she broke a bottle oh is it a whole bottle yes the whole bottle she emptied it on the lord's feet you know it's like spreading everywhere everyone is getting to know so this heartfelt worship produced certain reactions in people some said you know if you read matthew mark and john also john seems to be a different incident altogether right different place um but if you read matthew and mark uh, and then luke as well we see that people had different reactions people said what a waste people said you know what a first of all what a you know what a woman why what a woman another response what a waste and i'm sure there must have been people saying she, did she really do that did she pour out the whole bottle is she repent i'm sure she, they must have been drawn they they must have been moved by what she did also although it's not mentioned i'm just imagining that could have been there as well yeah yeah shani you have a question yes yeah, so i just want to make sure i understand so you're saying that um you know her um i guess putting um using a perfume on jesus feet and kissing his mm. feet is kind of um is humbling herself which is kind of showing respect which is kind of an act of worship is that what you're saying that's yeah okay yeah so it was an act of extreme humility on her part um and and now we understand knowing the kind of person she was um and everything kind of fits in right uh, because she was in the presence of the lord the kind of impact the lord had in her life in her heart maybe and so she willingly intend so something must have happened you know prior to this you know so she planned brought this and she she did this in the house right yeah so yes an act of worship right okay thank you okay right okay so um to be we learn all this and it's it's deeply impactful if you think about it right if you think about it and say okay god 
you know, if this is an expression of worship, right, yes, I know that I have been forgiven much as well. Right? I have been forgiven much as well. And so, um, what is my expression of worship to the Lord? Do I value what He has given me? Right? Do I value what the, the kind of cleansing, the forgiveness, the, the wholeness that He has? given us you know many times we we don't value that we uh, we don't we don't we're not aware of that the extent to which we have been saved right what we have been saved from what we have inherited you know the more you study in in Christ you realize wow all this we have and more right and uh, so in the in the book of um, i think it's in Philemon we read about um, about the fact that they the sharing of our faith becoming more and more effective by acknowledging every good thing that we have in Christ. Right? So just by acknowledging that and we turn it back to him in conversation and that becomes praise to our God, right? worship of our Lord. Right? Okay, so we'll, we'll stop here and then we'll, uh, we'll take a break and then we'll come back.